she's working for it now. <sighs> I was the queen of Grindr and for the first time ever I've had guys say, oh you're postdoc, sorry I'm looking for pre-ops. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, as you can see I am embracing embracing the plunging neckline lately because I did a video on how my breast implants have changed my clothing style and I felt really embarrassed to show any skin and now I'm like actually go for it girl so that's what I'm doing um, so I did a video on why I started OnlyFans and it became this epic video because I was talking about my characters I've developed and I was talking about the money side and how it's a business and then I started talking about what's it like having an OnlyFans for a few months as a postdoc transgender girl and I stopped there because I'm like girl this video is too long and that's like a whole different topic so I'm doing a little short video on that. I've only been doing, doing OnlyFans since July and I'm not in it because I think I'm going to make millions of dollars, I'm in it because it's a creative endeavor for me and I find that interesting. So yeah, um, as a postdoc trans girl I have not revealed I'm trans to I don't reveal it to anyone that joins my OnlyFans. The only people that would know are you guys if you joined or no that would be the only people because I don't disclose that I'm trans on any any of my social media so Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, you know I don't tell anyone. There is this moment of awkwardness with me because I've got a JJ and um, it's like quite uh, it feels risky to me to put myself out there and show that part of my body um, because I feel like I'm opening myself up for criticism maybe or being judged or being clocked even um, although I did some test um, I guess you call it um, consumer testing I guess on my snapchat to a lot of guys that don't know I'm trans on there and I just sent them some pictures of um, kitty cat and that I, oh it looks good and I'm like oh wow that's amazing so uh, pat myself on the shoulder there I was like okay I think I can reveal it on my um, OnlyFans without feeling like I'm going to be uh, clocked or made fun of um, we all know which angles look best for us as well so as with any modeling whether it's in a magazine like Vogue or Playboy or OnlyFans there's a certain amount of art directing that goes on so you won't be <laughs> girl, you won't be taking pictures of a model from a hideously unflattering angle like oh I'm sick you know you, you're gonna get the chin out girl make yourself look your best for the photo for the camera so there is curating going on there is art directing and there's editing happening um, with what I do so when I do take photos of um, my uh, kitty cat I make sure it is looking she's looking her best okay um, and there's, there's lots of images I don't put in that I'm like, oh gross like what? That's a terrible photo and it's given me a bit of dysphoria, I'm not going to lie. Some of the pictures I've taken, I've been like, okay, don't put that one in. Um, and I test a lot of images on my boyfriend. So I'll send him a picture and I'll be like, does this look good or does it look gross or what? Because I don't know. I'm not attracted to vaginas, so I don't know what looks good. And he's like, yeah, that looks good or that looks hot. Um, so I've managed to like do a bit of testing on him. Um, yeah, I'm just rambling now because I haven't thought out a script for this in any way. Um, yeah, so the sort of self-analysis of myself, of my body parts, has crept into my world because I'm creating these images that force me to look at myself. I'm editing myself like I would in my job. I used to be a, an art director. Um, so I was the senior designer and 
manager for a whole team of brand people and I have a degree in design, I know what I'm doing. When it comes to photography, I art directed many, many photo shoots. I've even done food, like food photography for, um, there's a coffee chain called Esquires. They're a Canadian coffee chain, I think, but they were in New Zealand, so I was managing the account and doing the photos for them and like putting the cream on the coffee and then the cream would like drop, so we ended up using shaving foam because it doesn't drop. And so, you know, there's all these tricks. The same tricks come into OnlyFans. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff happening. So, um, where am I going with this? Where am I going with this, guys? Yeah, so as a trans post-op creator, I would say I've struggled to find my value because I'm now up against cisgendered girls. There's nothing that makes me unique anymore. Like, yeah, it's unique to have a man-made, man-generated, created kitty cat, but that doesn't make me sexually unique or sexy. It just makes me kind of a weird freak of nature that was created. So lab science material, I don't know. So I don't see the value in myself, which has been really interesting. Um, I've had to put myself on the same level as a cisgendered woman, female OnlyFans creator, and compete with them for space on the platform. And I don't have anything unique in terms of my um, down below parts. I guarantee had I had done OnlyFans prior to surgery, I probably could have made a really good success of it, to be honest. Um, I think I could have done bloody well. Um, I was, back in the day when I was single, I would use Snapchat a lot and do really interesting stories on there, um, like full on characters and stories. Uh, and using what I had at the time, which was a dingling, and it was <laughs> high quality. And I had a lot of Snapchat people that loved all those videos. So I was kind of doing an OnlyFans, but for free in a way on Snapchat. I was a stupid girl. Um, and my value, I feel has dropped significantly since I had the surgery, like my sexual value, my, um, I was the queen of grinder when before surgery, I, so many guys were interested. And for the first time ever, I've had guys say, oh, you're post-op, sorry, I'm looking for pre-op. So the fetishes, the fetishists ain't interested in me and they would have been my prime market before surgery. I could have monetized the hell out of this and made money on it um, and had no issues with it because they're fetishizing me. Fetishizing me? I've got no problems tipping them upside down and getting as much coin out of them, out of their pockets. You're using me, I'm going to use you. So I'm veering off course here. Um, so it's been interesting being a post-op trans girl because now I'm kind of on the same field as all the other girls. The only thing I've got to my advantage, I feel, is my own personal traits now, not what makes me physically different. So I'm having to use my creative skills, all that art directing skills I've got, all that marketing background I've got. Um, yeah, so that's why I created those characters because to me, that makes me different. The creativity of the characters I've created, so Miss Teacher, Miss Pyro, Miss Mouse, me, Lee Francis, the creator, who is also a character to a certain degree, um, is a lot of fun. And I feel like it's giving me a point of difference. Um, I threw up a Miss Mouse character. <laughs> image to my Twitter and it got picked up pretty quickly. That kind of went viral and I was like, okay, so I might be onto something here by creating characters. Um, I know there's cosplay and there's all that stuff, but I feel like that's what's making me different. I don't feel the need to like tell anyone I'm trans on my channel. They're not there for that. 
because that doesn't I'm not different anymore like they would be there for that if I was post-op because you can't hide that and you're you're then going for the fetish guys but I'm not I'm just they're just general straight audience or lesbian even um, that I've got so there's no kind of value in me disclosing what I am I'm not in a relationship with them they're just looking at an image on screen yeah um, so it's interesting that I have I guess I've been looking at myself more it's been more of a self-reflective journey as a post-op trans girl because I'm looking at my physical attributes that I have had created that I have paid for um, and I'm you know evaluating them in imagery like I would with any model I would have directed when I was working in those agencies and I'm like doing it to myself I'm modeling I'm taking the photos and I'm editing and critiquing at the same time which I guess is what we do as um, we do that as trans women all the time we are our own art directors we are always looking at what we're wearing how do we look how do we sound are we passing if you want to pass we might be thinking about that or we're like that outfit looks cute suits my body shape like we're always more than I think cis girls potentially do and I don't want to put down cis women and say their journey is not as valid because it is they still have a lot of, they have a lot of pressure on them as well but I feel like trans girls put extra <laughs> pressure on ourselves because we are literally transitioning into another gender so our whole lives are about an anal analytics analysis how are we doing did I pass that day did someone just misgender me on the phone I need to raise my voice next time I talk or when I went to the shops that person gave me a weird look why was it was it my shoes was it my hair was I not passing oh I can't wear that anymore because of this this and this there's just so much going on up in here that I'm kind of doing that I guess on my only fans a bit but I'm not crazy about it like I'm not going nuts and I'm not having meltdowns and crying I'm like looking at it from an artistic point of view I've worked out all my issues with my gender and my transition so I'm not like melt, having meltdowns and going, oh my god <laughs> this is you know it's like I'm not doing that um, yeah so that's probably all I want to say about that um, yeah I will leave the video here and I'll see you in my next one please like and subscribe the video and um, I also put my social links in all my videos now so you can have a look at my Instagram um, and follow the pathway there to some of my other socials and I will see you in my next video bye